Hi, I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. Today, I am going to talk about another Lean Six Sigma case study. ABC Company is a shaft manufacturing organization. That company supplies these shafts to the other industry majors like XYZ and GFH companies. In the accounts payable team, they were facing a challenge. They were making errors while processing some invoices. And because of which, their vendor payments are delayed. And they were losing discount. And there were delay in the delivery of the raw material as well. So this company has decided to form a team which was led by a black belt to resolve this issue. The first thing that the team did was to create a project charter. Project charter has six elements. These six elements are business case, problem statement, goal statement, scope of the project, milestones and team charter. It is very important to identify these six things before you start a project. Business case should have the background of the business and then it should also describe what is the problem and what will happen if this problem is not resolved. The next is the problem statement. Problem statement should always be data driven. So like in this case we have said based on the last 12 months data it was observed that the invoice processing error rate is 15% and the goal the goal should be smart, specific, measurable, relevant, attainable and time bound. So in this case the goal statement is to reduce the invoice error rate from 15% to 1% by June 2017. This is a smart goal statement. It contains from and to statements like from 15% to 1% we want to reduce. It is tangible in nature which is measurable and it is time bound as well. By June 2017 the team had to finish this project. So it is important to keep a time bound goal statement. Scope of the project is the invoice process and all other processes of the accounts payable team were out of scope of this project. Team started this project on March 17 and they had to finish it by June 17. In the team charter, sponsor of the project is VP Finance Operations, champion is AVP Finance, mentor is Mohit Sharma and the process owner is Finance Manager and then they had team members. The next thing that the team did was to create a fishbone diagram. They all went inside the room and started brainstorming why they had high rejection rate. So some of the causes were under people, they had careless mistakes, less agent tenure or associate knowledge. Under process, they had too much manual details to be entered and wrong payment made are some of the high rejection rate causes. Under vendor, they had error in the invoices, they sent duplicate invoices and they sent these invoices late. Under mother nature, shift was one of the causes. Then team went ahead and collected data. So once the data is collected, they figured out the process capability. So then the team calculated process capability where the total number of defects are 75. Total invoices are 500 and opportunity per invoice is 5. Opportunity per invoice means they can make 5 different kinds of error in one invoice. So hence opportunity per invoice becomes 5. Then the formula for DPMO is total defects per opportunities into 10 to the power 6. And with this formula the DPMO value comes out to be 30,000. And the sigma value formula in the excel sheet is equal to norm SINV 1 minus defects upon total opportunities plus 1.5. In this case it turns out to be 2.53 sigma. Team was able to collect some data. So in column C1T the data of defects or no defects on invoices is there whether it is a defective invoice or not a defective invoice. The next column is agent which agent has performed on these invoices and next column is shift in which shift these invoices were processed and the next column is tenure. What is the tenure of the agent when the invoice was processed? So as our Y is discrete and our X's are discrete, the team will have to do chi-square test. And the path to perform chi-square test is stat tables chi-square test for association. This is the kind of block that will appear. In the first column which is rows you will enter column C1 which is defect or no defect and in the columns you will enter agent 
and we will click OK. P value of this test, which is less than 0.05, indicate that this is a significant contributor. Now we will go to this table and understand which agent is making more errors. In chi-square test, there are two values which can be seen. The first one is this value, which is 16.35 in this case. This is the expected value which is calculated by the system. So 16.35 are the expected defects of agent 1, but the agent 1 is producing 39 defects. It means the problem is with agent 1. If you look at all the other agent data, they are producing less defects than expected. We will do a deeper analysis of the errors made by these agents in the upcoming video. So next X which was supposed to be tested was shift, whether shift is contributing or not. So the next test will also be a chi-square test because X and Y both are discrete and the path remains the same. In Minitab if you have to use the previously used tool or command, you can use Ctrl E to open the same screen. Here under rows column, defect or no defect will be selected, under column, we will select shift, double click on it to select and click OK. P value of this test indicates that it is not a contributing X. It means whether we are working in morning shift or evening shift, it doesn't make a difference. P value is greater than 0.05 in this case. The next X that we are going to test is tenure, control E. Rows will remain the same. Under columns, we will select tenure. P value of this test is also less than 0.05, which indicates that tenure is a significant contributor. If we go and see the tenure expected value versus the actual value, greater than 12 months, the expected value is 36.90, but the defects which were made are only 19. 0 to 6 months, the expected value is 25.50, but they are making 40 defects. And 6 to 12 months, expected defects are 12.60, but they are making 16 defects. It means the focus should be on 0 to 6 months tenure people. Now the team did another analysis on agents, which I said I will show you in the upcoming video. So I have pasted some data here on agents and the errors that they have made, these errors are classified into careless mistakes or knowledge gap errors. With the help of Pareto chart, let us understand which agent has contributed more in careless mistakes or in knowledge gap. For this, we are going to create a Pareto chart. And the path to reach to the Pareto chart is stat, quality tools and Pareto chart. Under defects or attribute data, we will enter agent underscore one. Under frequencies, we will enter careless mistake, which is column C6. And now we will click OK. If you look at this Pareto chart, the careless mistakes, agent one is contributing 54.1% to the overall error rate. So all the careless mistakes made by these people the maximum contribution is agent 1 and they are contributing 54.1% of the total error. Let us see what is the issue with the knowledge gap. I will press Ctrl E to reach to the previously used screen. Under defects or attribute data, we will select agent underscore 1 only and under frequencies in now we will change this to knowledge gap. So for knowledge gap Pareto chart, agent one is contributing 50% of the total errors. So it means when we have to work on agent one, we have to work on agent one from both the perspective. One is the disciplinary issue because of which the agent one is creating more careless mistakes. And when it comes to training, we also need to keep a high focus on agent one because 50% contribution is from agent one. This is how team was able to prioritize these root causes and identify on which areas the focus should be there. And with the help of this, they were able to create training plans. They were able to create uh, some of the one-on-ones with the manager. And with the help of that, they were able to 
reduce the total number of errors made by the agents and hence the target was achieved with the help of this team was able to pay the vendors on time and dollar 30k was the total loss in the discount that they were incurring that loss that they have started avoiding with the help of this project so with that we are going to end this project i hope you like this case study and if you really like this case study please give it a thumbs up and share this with your friends i will see you in my next upcoming video till then take care bye bye